Okay, hi everybody. So today we're gonna do the, uh, we're gonna start working on number one through 10 in the Canary section of the BC Review Binder. Okay, so here we go. Um, okay, so at time is equal to, at time is t is greater than or equal to zero, uh, a particle moving in the xy plane has velocity given by v of t is equal to t squared uh, comma 5t. Uh, what is the acceleration vector of the particle at time t is equal to three? Okay, well, the acceleration is just the derivative of the velocity, so we just have to take the derivative of velocity and then plug in three. So I have v prime of t is equal to two t comma five, and then I wanna go v prime of three, well, that's gonna be equal to two times three gives you six, and then I have five there, so the answer is b, okay? Uh, number two. Okay, so number two, we need to integrate this function, and we have the integral of x e to the x squared power dx. Now, we notice here right away that the derivative of x squared is the x. So this is just really u substitution. So I know when I'm integrating this, this is really nothing more than just integrating e to the u. So the answer is going to give me back e to the x squared. But by the reverse chain rule, you need to divide through by the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. The x's cancel, and so you still have 1 over 2, and then plus c. So the answer is going to be a. Okay, number three. Okay, so I have the limit as x goes to 0, sine of x, uh, cosine of x, all over x. Uh, the first thing we know we do is we plug in 0 for both. Uh, when I plug in zero for the top, uh, I get sine of x, which is zero, all over zero. So I know I have to use L'Hopital's rule. So using L'Hopital's rule, I'm going to have the limit then as x goes to zero of the derivative of the top. So I have to use the uh, product rule. So I have the derivative of sine is cosine. So cosine times cosine gives you a cosine squared x. And then sine times the derivative of cosine, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So I have negative uh, sine squared x all over one. And now when I plug it in, this goes to zero. That is one. Cosine of zero is one, one squared. So this gives you one. So the answer here is C or one. Okay, number four. Sorry, just let me organize my papers. Okay. So consider the series uh, with the summation as n goes from 1 to infinity of e of n over n factorial. If the ratio test is applied to the series, which of the following inequalities results, implying uh, that the series converges? So I know if I'm using the ratio test and it's going to converge, then the ratio has to be less than 1. So I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the n plus 1 term. So you plug one or n plus 1 in here. So e to the n plus 1 all over n plus 1 factorial divided by, now I'm just going to flip and multiply right away. So um, the nth term, so e of n over n plus 1, so I have n factorial over e to the n, and I need this to be less than 1. Okay, so now I just cancel some things out. Um, I have n plus 1 e's up here. I have n e's down here. So there's one more e up here. So these are going to cancel all but that, and just have an e there. And here I have n factorial over at one plus or n plus one factorial. Uh, so these n factorials are going to cancel all but just the n plus one here. So I'm left with the limits as n goes to infinity of e. E is a positive value, so I can drop the absolute values all over n plus one, and I know n plus one has to be positive too because it's going to go to infinity. So that's going to be less than one. And then go up here, and it looks like the answer is D. Okay, number five. Okay, which of the following is the length of the path described in the parametric equation x is equal to sine of t cubed and y is equal to e of uh, five e to the five t power from t is equal to zero to t is equal to pi. So if you remember here, all we have to do is just integrate simply the speed function from zero to pi. Uh, you notice they're all going from 0 to pi, so I don't need to worry about that. 
So uh, the length of the curve is going to be the integral from 0 to pi of the square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared dt. So plugging this in, I have the integral from 0 to pi. Uh, x prime of t. So x of t is sine of t squared, or cubed, sorry. So x prime is going to be, uh, by the chain rule, 3t squared times um, cosine of t cubed. Okay, and over here, taking the derivative of y, I have y prime is equal to 5e to the 5t. So I just plug it into the formula. So I'm going to go here, this uh, x prime squared. If to square all of this, so I have 9t to the fourth cosine squared of t cubed, and then plus y prime squared, so this. So 25 uh, e to the 5t squared, which is going to be to the 10t power. Okay, so I go up here and I take a look. So 9t to the 4, 25t. So it looks like the answer here is going to be C. Okay, awesome. Okay, number six. Okay, so let f be the function defined above. For which of the following statements is about f are true? Okay, f has a limit at uh, x goes to 2. Okay, so let's take a look at this real quick. Let's, let's go through and actually graph this. I have x squared minus 4 all over x minus 2. Um, if I simplify that a little bit, I have x. I'm going to factor that. So it's x minus 2 times x plus 2. So x minus 2 times x plus 2 all over x minus 2. Well, the x minus 2s cancel. This graph is nothing more than the graph of x plus 2. So x plus 2 as a y-intercept of 2, slope of 1, and it goes ahead and it goes up like this. However, at 2, it's actually equal to 1. So at 2, it's equal to 1. So that means up here, the graph is going to go up here. But at 2, there's going to be a hole, and then it's going to continue on like that. So that's what the graph of this function is going to look like. So what do we do? F has a limit at x equal to 2. Absolutely. It's approaching it from the left. It's approaching it from the right. It's going to the same y value. So this is a true statement. Okay. F, of, uh, F is continuous at x equal to 2. Obviously, that is false. There's a hole there. In order to draw, trade this out, I would have to put my pen down, pick it up, put it down. It's a horrible definition of continuity, but it works. Okay. Put it down and then pick it back up to continue. So this is going to be false. And now, f is differentiable at 2. If it's, if it's going to be differentiable at 2, it has to be continuous at 2. And you can see it is not continuous at 2. So this is also going to be false. So the answer is only going to be a only. Sorry, 1 only. OK, number 7. I got to get some of my stuff out of the way. OK, number 7. Trying to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see a little bit more clearly. There we go. Okay, so given that y1 uh, is equal to negative 3 and the derivative dy dx equal to 2x plus y, what is the approximation for y of 2 if Euler's method is used with step size of 0.5 starting with x is equal to 1? So if you remember what I did here is I go x naught, y naught. I'm going to start off at the beginning, and I know that coordinate is given by the point 1, negative 3. And then I just continue to make steps until I get up to 2. So I know x1, y1 is going to be, I just add on the 0.5 here. So I have 1.5. I'll figure out the y value in a second. And then I have x2, y2 is going to be equal to add on the step here, and I'm going to get to 2. Now, what about the y value? Now, the y value, remember, you take the prior y value, negative 3, you add on the step, and the step is uh, 0 0.5, so 0 0.5, but times the derivative at the prior location. So here's the derivative right here, and I need to evaluate this at 1, negative 3. So I'm going to come over here. Uh, can you see this? 
I have dy dx evaluated at the point 1, negative 3. And that's going to be equal to, just plug it into the derivative here. So 2 times 1 is 2. Minus 3 is going to be negative 1. So that's negative 1. So that's negative 1 there. So then this coordinate then becomes 1.5 comma negative 3 minus a half is going to be negative 3.5. Okay? Rinse and repeat. Go to the next one. So down here, you go to the prior y value. The prior y value is negative 3.5. Plus the step times the derivative located at the prior location. So uh, once again, I have to go here to the derivative. So where can I go? Let's sneak right up above here. So I'm going to go dy dx evaluated at the coordinate 1.5, negative 3.5. And that's going to be equal to, okay, so come up back here, plug it in. So I have 1.5 times 2, which is 3, plus y, which is negative 3.5. So I have 3 minus 3.5, so that's going to be negative, um, negative 0 0.5. So this is going to be 2, comma, uh, negative 3.5, minus 0.25. Uh, so that's going to be negative 3.75. And the answer there is going to be the best. Okay, number eight. Here we are. Okay, so number eight. Okay, right away you should know what this is. This is a Riemann sum. I mean, yes, it states it there, but it's given away by the tables and the and the integral. Okay, so boom, you should automatically know what that is. Okay. So uh, function f is continuous on the closed interval, 2 to 13, and has values as shown in the table above. Using the intervals 2, 3, 3, 5, and 5, 8, and, sorry, and 8, 13, what is the approximation for this obtained with the left Riemann sum? So left Riemann sum, we're going to be used the points on the left. So my intervals are from 2 to 3, 3 to 5, 5 to 8, and 8 to 13. Okay, so the integral from 2 to 13 of f of x dx is approximately equal to, okay, so the length of the first interval is 1, times the height determined by the left-hand point, which is going to be 2, so it matches up with 6, so times 6, uh, plus the interval length there is 2, times the left-hand notion is negative 2, plus the interval length there is 3, times the height, so on the left-hand point, is going to be negative 1, plus the last one, which is 5, and times the height determined at that point, which is 3. Okay, so now I just need to go and add these up. So I have 6 minus 4 minus 3 plus 15, which is put the positive ones together, 21 minus 7, which is going to give me 14. So the answer there would be good. So I'm just double checking all my work as I'm going through to make sure I'm not making any errors. Okay, uh, number nine. Okay, the graph of the piecewise linear function f is shown above. So this is the graph up here. Uh, if, the capital I, uh, if g of x is equal to the integral from negative 2 to x of f of t dt, of the fine, which of the fine uh, values is greatest? So if I'm integrating, I'm going from left to right, I'm just going to integrate, I'm just going to use the area of the curve. So I'm starting here at negative 2. So as I integrate going to the right here, everything is going to be positive. It's going to continue to add up values, add up values, add up values, add up values, all the way up until I get to 1. And then once I get to 1, then I'm going to start subtracting away the values because it's below the curve. So in other words, the biggest it can go going to the right is 1. What about to the left? Well, left, you're going backwards, so it's going to be negative because the um, area under the curve is up above. So it's just simply going to be g of 1, and the answer is the pretty easy question. Okay, number 10. And this is where we'll stop today. And then we'll come back and do 11 through uh, 20 tomorrow. Okay, so in the xy plane, what is the slope of the line tangent to the graph? x squared plus xy plus y squared is equal to 7 at the point 2, 1. So I simply need to take the derivative. Um, this is called implicit differentiation. So I'm just going to take d, dx of both sides. 
So x squared plus xy plus y squared is equal to d dx of 7. Um, so taking the derivative here, I'm taking the derivative of x with respect to x. So this is 2x. Now this is tricky because I have x times y. So I'm taking the derivative of x times y. So the x matches up, but the y doesn't. So I have to make sure to be careful. But I do need to use, I do need to use the chain, or sorry, the product rule. So the derivative of x is simply just one. So we have plus y. And then I'm going to take x times the derivative of y. And I'm taking the derivative of y with respect to x. So I have to have um, x, y prime there. Okay, remember when you take the derivative of y with respect to x, you get the y prime. And then over here, the derivative of y squared is 2y. But once again, I took the derivative of y with respect to x. So this is going to be y prime there. And then on the other side, the derivative of 7 gives me 0. Okay, grouping together my y primes, I'm going to take the 2x subtracted to the other side. I'm going to take the y and subtract it to the other side. I'm going to factor out a y prime out of both of these. Okay. So let me bring uh, the 2x and y to the other side first. So negative 2x minus y. Now I'm going to factor y prime out of this one and this one. And I'm left with x plus 2y. Now divide through y prime is equal to negative 2x minus y all over x plus 2y. And now I just need to evaluate it at the point 2, 1. So I plug it in. So uh, I have negative 4 minus 1 is going to give me negative 5. All over 2 plus 2 gives me 4. So I have negative 5 fourths. And that's all we have for today. Okay, so thanks, and we'll see.